Uh, that being said, I have been like dying to play another League of This deck on stream. This deck has been like both very good and very fun. <laughs> I know it kind of looks like a pile, but this is a deck built around Elishnorn, Mother of Machines. <coughs> think about think about maybe playing the fourth Elishnorn, but uh, this is you know a a flicker deck and a Mary of the Sky Ruin deck. And what's cool about this list is that you have eight two mana accelerants here. You have four brought back to return two fetch lands on turn two, and four heartless summoning to power out your your ETB creatures here. And you know what's also very cool is that brought back is an accelerant into turn three Elishnor and turn three Muldrifter, turn three Golos. But it also like buys back your Avalanche Riders, your Muldrifters, your Solitudes, which is very very interesting and powerful. Yeah, Elishnor has is, is, has also been amazing in this deck. Like, doubling up on Riders triggers, Muldrifter triggers, Golos, just everything is so crazy. Double Leyline Binding. And Elshnorn is, like, much, much better when she costs three mana with Heartless Summoning, or you can ramp into it brought back. When you're just, like, on turn five, casting Elshnorn, it's something I'm a lot less excited about. Um, Muldrifter, Absolute All-Star... The, the, the deck is just, like, overflowing with synergy. Like, Golos, three mana with Heartless Summoning in play, finds you your Ameria, you can spin because you're a domain deck for Leyline Binding. Um, <laughs> this, the deck is oozing, oozing, oozing with synergy. Idyllic Range, double counter with Elishnorn. It's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, outgrinded by John. Modern is healing, huh? No white cards to pitch to Solitude in our mono white deck. Just play it for three mana. Ooh, is this uh Dravota Druid? I guess it's just Yogmoth. I haven't won too many die rolls today. I don't have too much of the sideboard for Yogmoth either. But game one's probably not too bad. But losing the die roll is not too good either. If I draw a white card, I'll probably just like solitude the wall. I guess no, I should just save it for uh just save it for Yogmoth. Yeah. What's the Shining Shield tech? What matchup do you want it against? And what are you pitching? So in theory, Shining Shoal is just, like, a a lot of damage when you're pairing it with Emeria um, and Chancellor of the Annex. So you can just pitch either of these cards to Shining Shoal and redirect, like, whenever you get hit by a Merc Tide or you get, hit, you get hit all in one big combat step, it's, like, zero mana. You know, you take eight, I take zero. And, like, finish off a game in that way. I, I, or, or, like, if your creature gets unholy heated, you can redirect six damage, hit them. If you get hit by a Titan, redirect it, deal them, deal them a lot. I think that's I think that that's the idea. I'm not really 100% sure. Oh, they they're sacking the hierarch. So they have a second evolution. They must have court. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, they can't even court for Yogmoth. One, two, three. Yeah, they're like one short. Double changes. Uh, I think there's actually no changes. I think I'm just clickbaiting right now. So, like, I had this... Mo I had in my mind this morning that I wanted to title the stream 1.1, but um, I was I, there wasn't really anything I wanted to change. I think we're actually just on pure, shameless clickbait. Brought back would be so sick. We brought back Moldrifter and Solitude here. Okay. The So, going Norn into Solitude next turn is something I want to do. That being said, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to binding. I have binding available because of the Yavamaya, thankfully. I think I'm just binding this. Uh, my RCQ went not very well. Um, I felt good about my deck selection. I felt good about my play. I honestly didn't have that much fun, though. I don't know. Kind of a combination of reasons, like FOMO from the PT... A little bit too like <laughs> I love talking to spikelings when when people who, who like like don't like who like clearly don't watch the channel but know that I stream try to start a conversation I have a really hard time talking to them 
there was a lot of, hey, you're the streamer guy. Those words were said to me like three times. <laughs> I don't know. I never know how to respond. But it was okay. It wasn't too bad overall. Any day playing Magic's a good day. Maybe we should just Golos here. I should have one more white card. So I could go Norn, Pitch, and then play on a hard casting Solitude next turn. That's probably fine. I played Prowess. I felt pretty good about it. I just, like, I had two games where, like, I really felt like I played as well as I could and just, like, I nearly lost one of them and then got crushed by... Crushed by Sanctifier, one of them. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Is it ever correct to play the second summoning? I don't think so. Not here, at least. Well, Metagolos is kind of nice, but you have too many too toughness creatures, I think. Norn should suffer dying? No, it's only ETB effects. This is a die trigger. Norn doesn't really stop very much. It's like stops their messenger and their innkeeper, which have both already been used, funny enough. Sonic Blast. I was playing Chain to the Rocks. I'm still, like, pretty... Pretty pro change the rocks. Do you find it's hard to talk to people who barely know about the stream because it's surface level? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like. Okay, I don't know what the resp like the best response to is. Hey, you're that streamer guy. Like, what do you say? What do you say to that? Yeah. Yep. Is that the whole... And then it's just, like, weird if you just go, yep. But it's it's hard to, like, match, like, give them a lot of enthusiasm. Yes, that's me! I'm Aspiring Spike. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Your support is very appreciated. Like, how, how do you do that for someone who doesn't watch the stream? You know what I mean? I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> that's the one? <laughs> okay, at the very least, if that's the one, I have a, you know, like, like a lot. I have a hard time mustering that energy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you for liking and subscribing. Just talk to them, ask how they know about me. I guess. I guess, yeah. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspire. It's, it's not that big a deal. I just I just don't know, like, you know. It's, I, I, it's, it's not that big a deal. I don't know, but, but no, isn't the dialogue tree just like, hey, how do you know about me? Oh, I don't, I don't really know you. I just have, like, kind of vaguely heard of you. Okay, thanks. I mean, that's fine, right? Um, I kind of want to just salty both of these. I also kind of want to just go loose, get two lands. You're thinking of Doomwake, yeah, that's way better. Have ever had any memorable fan interactions? I love I love talking to the Spikelings. I love talking to people that watch the stream. It's awesome. It's my favorite shit ever. It's so good. Uh, I just I just I just find it difficult to talk to people who like who don't watch the stream and What's are up? just like it's loosely aware of, loosely aware of me. You know. No, I say hi. I'm not. I'm not weird about it. I say hi. You know. Yeah. I go. Yeah. You know. That is what I do. I just go. Yeah. When people don't watch the Dominion Dominion stream. I mean, I just. I. I the, for the most part, I just want to like just be a normal person at these tournaments. You know. I. I'm not like out here like trying to have conversations about the stream. I'm. I'm just trying to play a Magic tournament locally. I, you know, would typically just prefer to be treated like a normal person. I feel about Norn, only playable in summoning decks. Norn is, like, at, at her best in the summoning decks. I think also playable in, like, elementals.
But no, I love I love talking to fans of the stream. I don't mind talking to people who don't watch the stream either. It's fine. It just it just happened a lot this weekend. And it was just direct nothing. the fan the fangirling to me, yeah. and I will absorb it all. Esther is like <laughs> I don't know. She loves the. I'm like, oh, you know my name. Wow. <laughs> sometimes, although, yeah, sometimes whenever, like, I'm at the tournaments with him, um, they're, they're so starstruck by him, they don't notice me. And I'm like, hi. And then so when they say, hi, Esther, I'm like, oh, thank you for noticing me. This is my 15 minutes of fame. Riding Should have played him. the, um... Sorry, I should have played. You can keep going, Esther. I should have played the. Uh, no, you're fine. I should have attacked before playing the Golos. <laughs> we get to blow up uh, four lands next turn, potentially. Someone said, come back. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> you have? Uh, I was right, I was right we... to the left of you. Oh, how long? For like two seconds. Oh, okay. I guess that when you said you've been here, I thought you meant like. Yeah. When, more than the maybe. When one a jumble minute. of numbers said come back, I'm like, just look mm, to the side. I see it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. You're, <laughs> you're doing your classic. Say something, then like read the chat to see if people thought you were funny. Then uh, come ha, back. Ha, come back in. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> All right. Second higher. One card in hand. Well, Esther plays Dark Souls. Dude, Esther is the funniest person ever to watch play video games. When we've been playing, when we were playing Mass Effect, like, she is just, like, she's, like, an actual content creator. She's, like, reacting and, like, engaging and instead of just sitting here stoically like I do. And she's, uh, very good to watch. Wait, how does my Sigma face look? Perfect as always, sweetie. <laughs> so they have Cord. They can't get Yogma, thankfully. And my favorite character in Mass Effect is Liara. She goes, hello, Shepard. <laughs> yes, yeah, Esther's Liara impression is perfect. <laughs> okay, we can, we can get the second writer's post-combat, I think. Well, I guess it's maybe attacking for one more, or maybe just making them use the Cord first is better. How do you like Mass Effect? I love it. I, I grew up with the game. Um... And then Esther, we, 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 Esther finished the trilogy, like, last week for the first time. And it was, like, my second playthrough through. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I was supposed to brought back this turn, like, let them, like, block the solitude. But it, it is, it is also nice, it is also nice getting to put the grist to one here. Yeah, no, I, sh I shouldn't have cast the second Riders, though. I should have just cast Brought Back, I think, post-combat. I think you beat Pop for the four months. Yeah, Esther, yeah, Esther romanced Liara um, in all three games, but she also romanced Garrus and Kelly in two. <laughs> we sequenced it properly to get Max Romance. Alright, so not gonna pay Echo. We can brought back to kill their forest, which is probably gonna be correct. Let me just go ahead and one mana draw two. If I like Mole Drifter, brought back Mole Drifter also. So I have to send the insurance leader lady my proof of registration. Does that mean taking a picture of my registration sticker? Um, I think that means that you should be able to ask her what it means, though, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so let me attack with the Avalanche Riders, because I want to be able to block with Golos and then just brought back my Golos here. Get closer to Ameria. Can get a fetch land off Golos for the Idyllic Range. Is 
They've been playing a flag since of Jakaris so you could riders it and brought it back. It's way way too lost in the sauce. Oh, I forgot we get the double trigger. Way too lost in the sauce, though. Still want one fetch land, I think. Because we're not quite triggering a Mary yet. Okay, could have an Elshnorn that's a bit bigger. Although the thing is, I like I want my opponent to keep attacking. <laughs> I want them to keep attacking so I can brought back and win the game. So let's uh let's wait. Does you think he'll Yeah, we gotta terminate it last match. Is this game one? This is game one, isn't it? <laughs> Long game one. Golo spin? Oh yeah, how did I forget about Golo spin? This ends up working out a bit better though, I think. So I get to go grab a planes, brought back Golos, Wind Swept Teeth, get a Maria and then a planes, and then we have two Ameria triggers that get doubled up by Nor next turn. How's the next Titan matchup? Um, it depends. I think typically very good, but if your Titan opponent is playing two Hydroid Crisis, four Oblivion Stone, um, it's a bit worse, which just happened to us. But, like, being able to turn three Norn against Titan is a big deal. You're main decking four Avalanche Riders. You're main decking, um, you're main decking, um, the Solitudes, too. So, it's like the, co the combination of those things make the matchup, I think, favorable to some extent. So, not yet. But against the four of Oblivion Stone Titan variant, much worse. Much worse. Valus, thank you for Prime. Appreciate you. O Stone and Titan. Four O Stones and Titan. Four. Pretty good against this deck, as we found out. I'm gonna run it back, I think. Yeah, yeah again, what's nice about Elishorn against Titan 2 is like you can turn three it pretty consistently with four brought back and four Heartless Summoning. Which is like very, very good against them. Thank you, Valis. Love all the YouTube viewers. When you bring in Vitos, uh, you bring them in against like Control, Cascade, Creativity, um, and then you know they're also like a bit more versatile. Play against like the Green Red Storm deck, you can bring them in. Pretty versatile sideboard card. About Karmic Guide, I do love Karmic Guide. I don't think we already have twelve five drops, so it's kind of hard to play Karmic Guide. <laughs> like I would play the fourth Norn first. I'm guessing the Tron matchup is pretty bad against the stack. Well, it's probably somewhat close. Like again, the four the, the four Riders of the main like make like your Tron and Titan matchups like pretty reasonable. When like with without those cards, it's like pretty unreasonable. Um, I think I, I think I have to mulligan. I would love to have a solitude, like a solitude start, and this is like just not a matchup where I can wait forever either. Any thoughts on what I would move from Bant Coco to add Elishnorn? Is the deck not capable of running her? Uh, I mean, I would cut the Cocos, and then like drastically change. Like I, w I wouldn't play Glassful Mimic with the, with the cut Cocos, but if, if you were gonna play Norn and Bant, you would cut Coco. Um, you know, one reason, like, Norn is really shining here, though, is because I'm playing a lot of, like, two-mana ramp spells that curve really well into Elish Norn. Uh, like, just, like, five-mana cast Elish Norn is something I'm not that excited about. And, um, I'm, like, really not that interested in playing Elish Norn in a deck without, like, a good amount of acceleration at the moment. Not, not saying that you can't, and not saying that, you, you know, you absolutely have to build a deck this way, but that, that's kind of my current attitude i suppose good dress could could wait could could wait here um i can actually cast leyland binding because of yavamaya i can go esper triumph sacred foundry and waiting here lets me potentially brought back if i draw it if i miss i'll just you know double triumph fetch could coco and reconfigure to play evolution yeah you could um you could it would be pretty different though Norn and Glimpse Elementals. Uh, I don't know if I like it in Glimpse necessarily. Um, I, 
I, I have... I, I do think Elishnorn is playable in the elemental archetype in general. Um, I'm not crazy about her there. She's okay. She's definitely okay, but I'm not, you know, not over the moon. And, like, I don't know. Are they running Dress to Preserve 2 Life for Yogboth? Maybe, yeah. It is weird to see it over Thoughtseize, I agree. Okay, maybe need to find a Solitude here. Maybe just need to be on the play for game three. With Yavamaya in the deck, with Yavamaya, is it worth to leave one Trauma deck for potential cycling in the future? I think in this game, at least, it seems to be more relevant just to not have tap lands, but could be. Yeah, could, this could just be um, Sacred Foundry. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe Elishorn is really good in Glimpse. I, I haven't played almost any Glimpse, so I don't have a big frame of reference, I guess. Is there some way to mitigate drawing multiple summonings? Yeah, just like draw so many cards that it doesn't matter. Just draw so many cards with your mole drifters and stuff that you don't mind just drawing two copies of this. What does Duress hit the Inquisition doesn't? Binding and Typhoon, Murktide Regent, Fury, Solitude, Teferi, Time Raveler, Karn the Great Creator, Yog Moth. Um, obviously not bringing in all of those matchups, but is that a Supreme Verdict, really big one. Uh, we have 3-2 with Atroxa Neoform. I think that the, the other Gorios deck may be the better Atroxa deck, but I, I do want to work a little bit more on it. Primeval Titan. <laughs> Primeval Titan, a big hit for Duress. Or Thoughtseize. <laughs> I'll, I'll get right on it, Snakes. Get right on it. Alright, we have to draw Solitude to win. We have Game 3 on the play if we lose. Should Yogmoth be able to put a counter on himself? Um... Like you're talking about, like balance-wise, I, I don't, I don't think I would add that to Yogmoth. I don't know, I don't know if it's it, how intentional it is that Yogmoth can't put a counter on itself. Probably intentional, but it, it, it only can't because it has protection from humans and itself as a human, which makes it, you know, weird at least. Oh, you're just saying, oh, yeah, you thought, you thought that was that, yeah, that's not what was happening. All right, no solitude at the top, and we're going to go to game three. Do play like one to fairy on the play. Just going to run it back. Yeah, you can't Asmo it, and you 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 also can't target it with Hepatra's uh, triggered ability. So there's yeah, a few a few little corner case scenarios. Fine hand, definitely happy to have Solitude, most important card of the matchup. Happy to be able to like potentially binding uh, a mana dwarf on turn two. I struggled to set against Yogg. I had an easy time setting against Yogg. I just didn't. Just didn't. Alright, rest in peace, Leyline Binding. We're going Esper Triome, Sacred Foundry. I'm going to cast a Duress opponent. Uh, Wall of Roots is pretty good here. Very good turn. Wall into, into Young Wolf. I no longer have a white card for the Solitude. They're surgicaling my Leyline Bindings, and they're doing it in my draw step, where if I had a Leyline Binding, I could cast one. <laughs> Deal, though. I, I accept. I accept. I think Skyclave in general is pretty underpowered. If it was, if the cost was, like, white, too, I'd be way more interested, because you could play it one mana off... Um, Heartless Summoning, it's like definitely good in this matchup, but I, I think in general it doesn't shine very much. It's not very good against Murktide, not very good against Urza Saga. Doesn't get rid of Fury or Solitude on the board. The 
they missed their land drop. It's a really big deal for me. Death Rage Shaman could fit. Uh, it, it, never suggest playing banned cards. You'll get banned from the chat for cheating. This is your one warning. <laughs> this is your one warning! Don't ever suggest Death Rage Shaman again. Dude, they really, they really hate Leyline Binding, huh? They sur they they surgical by bindings, and now they play Haywire Might against. I guess they could also hit my Heartless Summoning. <laughs> Zamir, is the volume kind of low, dude? I I feel like every single stream I see people in chat going, "Spike, your volume's way too high." Spike, your volume's way too low. Spike, I can hear you scratching your beard, and it's really making me feel things. I just feel like I hear everything you could uh, every stream <laughs> beard mike when i know it's all it's all part of the yeah part of the fun huh i mean if they want to haywire might this that's okay Yeah, people keep saying it's quiet. I have like I have like literally everything turned up. I'm sure there's like some some bar is down. My desktop audio is turned my my mic audio is turned all the way up. The tab on my mic is also turned all the way up. There's probably something. There's probably something I could be doing a little bit differently, but at the very least I'm not super concerned about it. Yeah, I'll just block like this, and then I can uh, ephemerate my soul to get them off of mana completely. If they have a land to play, you know, I could have Avalanche Riders did, but... <laughs> Fun has so very much oversight boarded. Maybe I could have left the Wall of Roots, though. I don't know. This ephemerates kind of the uh, nail in the coffin. My opponent might attack with both here, though, and I can go, like, um, counter on the Solitude into uh, Ephemerate and then rebound on the wall. Nobody ever, ever plays around Idyllic Grange. So I saved the fetch line because it brought back. Mary is seven planes, so we're, we're not you know, quite in the Mary range. We're getting there soon, though. An empty board is a screenshot. Well, I don't think they ever had an empty board, did they? Not sure that it does necessarily. I think people's screenshot threshold is a little low, if I'm going to be honest. I'm gonna attack here, I think. My opponent might play around another Grange. And if not, like I, I, I can just bring it back with Amaria next turn. Assuming I don't get Salt or uh, Endurance. When I get the Amaria going, I, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> the as soon as, as soon as I possibly could have. Yeah, yeah, it's seven, not six. Let's go. Ooh, rewarded for keeping the garden in the deck. 
Ooh, love this hand. A lot of ways we could sequence this. Thankfully, we'll have less choices. Be a bit easier. Atraxa. I think Atraxa is like maybe a little bit win more. You could play one. Like, like heart like Atraxa being only five mana with Heartless Summoning is pretty interesting. But I think it, I think there's a good chance Atraxa is win more in the stack. After PT, do you feel like Pioneer is more open to brewing? Um, not ex not exactly because of the PT, but like, or may maybe be like I just, there was like almost no one in cards at the PT, and at at the very least, I feel like I'd be interested in exploring a little bit with the the one cards. That being said, I, I know Doomwake has been doing a lot of that too, and it's not like nobody's doing it, but. I am a, I'm a tiny bit more interested in brewing in Pioneer after the PT than I was, but I'm still not you know, dying to <laughs> dying to play Pioneer. But that's more so, I think, because Modern is really fun than Pioneer being uninteresting. What's the reason to not play Prismari Command and Pioneer Creativity? Um... By other cards instead i guess <laughs> i i i don't know i i don't think that prismari command is like that good in pioneer with um um like grease fang being like pretty unpopular yeah i, I would guess that like grease fang being unpopular is a big part of the reason not to play it No, that's not my Instagram, Nicole. That's a bot. I, I don't know why a bot has... Or, I guess not a bot, but it's a scam account. <laughs> Should be, like, pretty obvious it's not me based on the posts. I see, I see. Nice Blood Moon opponent. Dude, they're evoking fury without the ability to undie it on an on an avalanche riders. And they pitched Fable! Fable is so insane on this board. They surely, surely they can uh white attack Ragavan. Surely that was a, they they must have thought that they could have played it, right? Yeah, they did, they definitely didn't realize they were <laughs> off the black mana. And hold the triumph in hand, I think. Alright, love two. Walgums draw two. I, again, I didn't attack with Riders because of Ragavan. I have the inevitability in this matchup by a lot, so I just don't need to be very aggressive. And, like, the Ragavan could be my opponent's only source of black mana after I kill their swamp there. Well, if you guys thought Fable was hard to answer cleanly, just simply Elishinor and Leyline Binding. <laughs> the cleanest answer for Fable I've ever seen. Yeah, why, why would I get rid of Blood Moon? I open myself up to Terminate. I can cast everything important in my hand anyways. <laughs> They're more likely to cite it out for game three and two and three. Oh, I love this deck. Oh, God, this deck's so fun. I know it kind of looks like it's all over the place, but this the amount of synergy in this deck is kind of unreal. Kind of seems up your alley. <laughs> are they killing a wall? What are we doing here? Okay, if they if they go double fury Elishnorn, oh they can oh they just get to put it into play. They just get to put it into play. But I was thinking if they if they could deal eight damage, then uh, I did have that covered with the get rid of Blood Moon into idyllic range my Elishnorn, make it nine toughness. 
Why not play the second RCQ? Is going to pay for the challenge? Um, I had like many, many reps with Prowess, and I think that I still think that Prowess is like one of the best decks in the format. I also didn't own Elishnorns, and I also don't own Heartless Summonings, but um, I thought I thought the Prowess was a good choice. I think this would have been a fine choice too. This would have been a fine choice. It's maybe better to binding. It shouldn't be that big a deal. I'm gonna bring in four Sanctifier and Vex. I feel great about it. I might also bring in kind of heartless summoning for one to fairy. Kind of want two. Let's play one. Let's do these work. This list. I don't know. Like I went. I know. I went to like change some stuff. Like the, obviously, like it's an early draft, so like sideboards always take some time. But I feel like pretty comfortable with the sideboard. I don't really think the main deck has a ton of wiggle room. Because, like, all the cards just work so well together, and it's, like, a really clean, like, 24-4-4-4-4-4-4, although, like, 3-1 split of Nor and Golos I think is good, too. I'm pretty happy with it. No Wisp Mirror for Moon Fable? Nah, you, like, like you could play around Moon, like, pretty well, um, like you saw there. Like, Moon cuts you off of eight cards, and you can Leyline Binding it. Just, like, just get two planes and play. You're pretty good, I think. Um, my opponent might side out Blood Moon after that game, and... And uh, you, you still have Leyland Binding for it, if you need to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, I know the curve like looks really weird, but it's really like you you have eight two drops into all your five drop acceleration. So like the brought backs of the Heartless Summoning curve really well into the the Norns and stuff. Yeah, we'll eventually play more of the Boros deck. You know, we we have, we've got a lot of irons in the fire. Tonight I'm going to be working on Blue Steel and then another brew I probably don't want to talk about. <laughs> but got a lot, a lot of irons in the fire, as usual. But the art, we, we only have played one league with the Boros Lotus Field deck and we 5 owed, so it's not like we will absolutely return to it at some point, I promise. Fix the wall. Okay, drawing binding, I'm going to get domain. <laughs> I almost didn't get the reference. Uh, <laughs> Eldra. Why blue steel? It got a new card, right? You got the new the new three drop. I've 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 also like felt like there's. It's an interesting package, an interesting pile of cards. It's gonna take some time and some effort to to hammer the list out though. But that is also what we do here. Great, we can play Sanctifier this turn off of a. Sacred Foundry, then I can Binding next turn. Hopefully they don't have... If they have a scam into Ragavan into Blood Moon, you know, we can just lose. If both have Elish... Yeah, I think two Norns say nobody gets any ETB effects. I am mostly hoping to dodge Elish Norn, and that has worked for me so far. I think this deck matches up with Cascade decks. Um, I think it's probably... Pretty good against Rhinos, pretty bad against uh, Living End. And then you have, you know, a bunch of Dovin's Vetoes on the sideboard. Elshorn's really good against uh, Glimpse, at least. Don't Turok me, please. Ephemerate only one drop. Uh, Binding is kind of like a one drop, and you also have Solitudes. Probably in Castle here. Do we concede to opposing Elish Norn? I mean, so the thing is, like, if you're playing against an Elish Norn, like, your Norns are probably, like, about as good as theirs. You also have Teferi that can, like, bounce them for a turn. Uh, Elish Norn also, like, at the moment, at the time of making this comment, is still obscure enough in this format that I, I'm not, like, really worried about it. Um, but that could change. Let's 
Maybe I'll wait one turn on the Grange so I can double up the counters. And then let me just main phase, get rid of this Dothy Voidwalker so they can't even play a land off of it. We have a lot of burn. Is Sunset Revelry bad? I mean, if you have a lot of burn, Sunset Revelry it seems fine. Like, just having... I think anti-burn sideboard cards is good. I think I think core firewalker is probably the card I choose to play over sunset revelry, but um, I don't feel super strongly about it. Are there any other lands with ETBs I considered? Um, not with the Ameria package. With the Ameria package, you're like kind of restricted on the amount of um, lands you can play. If they attack with both, I'm definitely blocking the shaman. Oh wait, no, that's not true, sorry. I don't know why. I don't even know why I had that thought. Mongoose, 18 months, and thank you. I definitely had I had that thought like very strong. Does it ever happen? <laughs> Ooh, don't don't feign death into the sanctifier opponent. Does it ever happen where you're like, I'm definitely gonna do this if this happens, and then there was like like no reason to. <laughs> I'm definitely pretty scared of I mean, I guess if this flips, they like they don't get the ETB off the Fury. But my life total is pretty low. We definitely need to uh, start top decking some stuff. Are Dressed Down decks a worry? I mean, Dressed Down decks are like Merc Tide and Control. Both matchups are fine. The card Dressed Down is good against you, though. You'll lose to stuff, though. What's nice is Torp Orb is actually not that bad because you're playing four Leyland Bindings, so compared to your usual, you're not so afraid. Basic planes, huh? Yeah, I was wondering if this got to make a Shaman or not. How does Dress Down work? I think they don't get to draw a card, but the, the Dress Down still is in play. Sadly, we're, we're one turn away from Ameria. It's going to be one turn short if we don't draw anything, I think. So it looks like we're going to go, like, end of turn, make a Fury, untap, make a Fury. So we need to draw all the spells. I'm going to wait on the fetch here. I don't want to just die to random bolt. That's a spell. Pretty good one. Um, I don't... Am I supposed to five... Am I supposed to five mana Mold Drifter or three mana Mold Drifter? I don't know. I have to draw four cards... I have three blockers, block, 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 die. I think I need to I think I need a three mana mold drifter. I need I need to find like solitude, leyland binding. I like this like the blocker by itself doesn't really do very much. So now I can play two sanctifiers. And go to two, assuming nothing else changes. End up being the same, basically. Same number of blockers, although I have better blockers here. So they're going to be attacking with three Furies. Their reflection will be tapped. Elastorn can block one of the Shamans, and I'll take two. So that's, that's assuming nothing else changes. I'm dead to... Lightning Bolt, Ragavan, Terminate. I would have made two, three, three Sanctifiers. That's probably a bit better, yeah. Oh, I need to not have six, though, because I want to be able to Ameria. Yeah. So I'll go, to, I'll go to one, and then I'll, you know, return Sol to double trigger. What did they discard? They discarded Ragavan, and just Undying Malice? <laughs> kicked kick to rock. Not learning their lesson. <laughs> I think a lot of people still haven't played against uh Elishnor, it seems. Good sign for me though. Pro White is this dead? Uh no, I can gain life with the um Oh, I was dead. I'm not dead because they Oh no, I'm they just sinned with everything. I'm dead. Thing. Exactly. Okay, game three in the play though. Lucy, struggling. 
Lucy hasn't been, uh... Test, 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 okay. Ooh, love this hand. Yeah, my, my microphone audio got like, I don't know, something got messed up, I have to re-edit for all the scenes. Yeah, but Lucy hasn't been here in so long. Mostly spends her days with Esther. Good. Cut vetoes for Moonlight against Veil. Vale. Um, you could do that. I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to side in the vetoes against Control, so Moonlight's not, not very good there. But you can. It's. I don't feel super strongly one way or another. Like, like, like one thing is like I, I think it's like not very realistic either for, for you to expect opponents to side in Veil vale against you even. How does Lucy get along with Athena? Um, for the most part, really well. They like argue over toys, and then Lucy like steals all the love usually, <laughs> and uh, and Athena sometimes is like territorial about food. But they really like each other, and they like play really hard. They like each other a lot, but they both have big personalities. Okay, pretty painful, but we get to go summoning into Muldrifter Ephemerate, which is pretty good. You can go like Norn into Muldrifter Ephemerate. How's summoning been? Summoning is insane in this deck. Um, it's like, you know, the deck is very much built with summoning in mind. I think this is a... Like, a, like summoning is basically zero mana here, and the next turn is gonna, you know, be like plus four mana. Yeah, I, I almost always play Brought Back before Heartless Summoning. Oh, I didn't realize I had a land drop to play. Damn it. Oops. Oh, they did it response. They did it before I targeted. Oh, wow. Huge news. Yeah, so why don't I just, you know... Get Naya Triome binding into Sanctifier. Probably discard the Heartless Summoning. Yeah. yeah, one good mistake deserves another, huh? Every thing you play is Chain of the Rock, Supported Hellraiser Control, but isn't Path if you don't have Chained. Uh, path is probably the best if you don't have Chained. You can play Ostify. I uh, lost game two, this is game three. You can actually, t it says on the screen too. Pretty beatable. <laughs> I totally forgot we had this coming up too. <laughs> So we get to go Norn into Evoke Mole Drifter, um, into go crazy, do whatever we want. Don't have any red cards at the moment, this is just a planes really. So let's go exile the Dothy, and then I think I'm gonna gain a life and exile the small drifter. And then we get to brought back Solitude and Mole Drifter. And I think I might as well exile I have a backup Norn in my hand. Gaining five life here seems pretty nice. I'm gonna have infinity cards. So I feel like the, I can really only lose if like my opponent has multiple bolts, so let's just gain five and turn that out off. Kind of been thinking about playing a second idyllic Grange. Excellent with your own Norn here feels crazy, but I think it's correct. 
<laughs> Weird. Discard four fetch lands. Two backup Norns in hand. Because I leave this back for Ragavan, it's only a 1-1. One, one. No attack. Oh, yeah, I should have attacked first, sorry. We'll be okay, it doesn't matter. Does Norn kill? Yeah, I don't know how Norn interacts with... Uh, I, don't, I, I guess against Fable it didn't do anything, so it probably doesn't stop Sagas. Do you want Soul Warden? Well, Soul Warden and Heartless Summoning is a pretty big nombo. You'd play probably Aryuk Champion if it was for this matchup, but... It, you, the, the, you can't play any one, one, one ones. Wait till Instep to brought back? Uh, why? Now you just get Fury. I mean, it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know, does Like, the only way I lose this game is, like, you know, multiple Lightning Bolts, and I think that I think that turning off that out is just much more important than anything else. Saga Sugar, you put a counter on them, a counter is a point of request to put back. Good to know, good to know. It's fine, have another one. Can also just keep uh, marrying them back. Ooh. So play this as my seventh planes. We go Elishnorn. It's a fairy bounce the Goblin Shaman. I think I just binding the. Fury and the Fable, probably. Well, I don't know. The, the, the Fable is kind of interesting, but I, I guess, like, the only way I could really lose. Like, they have to have a Blood Moon to shut off Ameria, otherwise, there's nothing they can do. So, let me let me just maybe keep the binding in hand for now. How do I configure Murktide list? I mean, I would, I would have to have played more Murktide recently than I have. I haven't really been playing the deck at all, so. I'm not really a good person to ask at the moment. Do I have badges for two years? I don't. I need to I need to get them. Hopefully it doesn't influence your subscription at the moment. What's ten months? Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're liking the stream. This card's Ragavan and just Ragavan. Learned their lesson after last time. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna get rid of my Mole Drifter and my Solitude, I imagine. They targeted Norn and not Solitude. That's a big mistake, I think. Hopefully my opponent kills Teferi, so we can just brought it back. No real reason to attack with the Norn because they're just gonna block with the Turok. I guess like they could mess it up, but mostly a waste of time, I think. Resolved. Norn is really, really good. I actually just bounce my well let's ephemerate the wall first but bouncing the heartless summoning seems good oh boy <laughs> oh no I only have 15 cards in my library <laughs> I was gonna ephemerate this again <laughs> Probably not. not correct, huh? Bounce wall, yeah, dude, not enough cards in the library. Bounce wall was better before we drew the ephemerate, I think. Maybe I should have just solituded the Spyro there. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It'd be hard to lose. Just a little bit ahead. 
As long as we don't... Uh, I mean, we could even bring back a mole drifter with a Maria. Ah! No! <laughs> okay. Forgot that Turok would... <laughs> Girl Turok discarding the hand size. It's funny. Still don't know how my opponent wins. Probably not by going to four with two Sanctifiers in play. They're probably dead anyways, yeah. Look at that close try to talk yourself in the 61, 62 cards like it's not crazy. I mean, I only... I mean, you can play 61, 62 sometimes, but... It's almost never because, like, you just can't figure out what the cuts. Like... In a lot of ways, deck building magic is like static. It's like static puzzle building, uh, where you're like, or not static, dynamic. It's like dynamic puzzle building where choosing to include other pieces shifts how the puzzle works and everything just kind of flows together. Um, and you can find yourself stuck sometimes because you have too many things to fit in, but a lot of times you have to like pull back and make a lot of changes oh dude and then my opponent is playing 80 <laughs> and my opponent is playing 80 <laughs> and so yeah and, and sometimes chat you just you just play 80 i'm just gonna get planes planes the main phase of this Yeah, funny time to <laughs> talk about it. Yeah, a lot of people were like, I'm just going to play 80 anyways. Good luck to them. Listen, all, all the cards are good in the, in the 80 card deck. It's okay. Uh, Whisper is way better than Dawnbreaker Cleric in your like, brought back deck, in my opinion. Um... A really good draw. Let me just go ahead and riders away there. Abundant growth. And then I'm probably getting Hallowed Fountain instead of Triumph for Domain right now. Could could maybe like no I I have a good brought back next turn because I just have Moldrifter Flood Strand. Red and six definitely always the always the concern with riders, but that's okay. Oh yeah, this could be the Elish Norn matchup. That would be really disastrous. But I, I think we can outgrind the the Rin. Not going to pay for Echo, of course. The land's not ideal, although I guess we're eventually gonna find a a Maria. Hoping for no solitude. Have the solitude, unfortunately. Pitching on math, but I can go Godless Shrine into Binding the Ren. So let's do that. Getting Elstrom tracks of root. I have. I'm kind of working on that. Yeah. I have like a couple ideas, but they they don't. It doesn't seem to be coming together very well, to be honest. A lot of moving pieces. Thankfully they banned Yorion, huh? Drew the Grange. Wall, wall, wall. Pink Floyd would be proud. Let's put a counter here so I can block down math, I guess. I thought... 13 would have skipped fours like over. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. I don't know. <laughs> it's always been a weird superstition. Yeah, five cards in their hand. As long as we can fade Elish Norn, I'm feeling good. But maybe I maybe by saying that, I'm summoning it. You know they're playing it. Eldritch Evolution Norn has been good in my testing. Um The thing about Eldritch Evolution into Norn is that like 
you you have to resolve like three man three drop into three drop. It doesn't come down until turn four usually. Sometimes turn three. It'll it'll be good when it happens, but I just don't think it's gonna happen often enough for like me to be like particularly excited about this strategy. You know what I mean? It's like your three drops that are good to sacrifice are like Renegade Rallyer, Eternal Witness. That's kind of like it, like Risen Reef kind of. Ooh, that's an insane draw. Again, just, just, just not that much, you know. There's just not that. Opponent, please, with your 80 cards, by the way. Damn it. Freaking 80 cards, by the way. I cannot with this. I thought the beam was dead. <sighs> <laughs> I can attack. It's not. Hammer, 36 months. Thank you. Happy three years. Why do they have 80 cards? They can't figure out any cuts. Yeah, you know, skill issue, huh? I suppose. Yeah, the, the mana is better on 60, but it, it's got to be, like, I don't think 80 can be correct. Like, I think it's got to be closer to just, like, 68, 70. I can be wrong. It's really, like, not that different, though. They lose, huh? Because they don't have the fetch land. They almost definitely would have used their Omnath mana for Deluge. And we found one off the deluge though. Isn't it close to the stats as playing three ebbs? I don't know. Like, if you're playing 70 cards, your mana gets a lot better and you don't need abundant growth. And you also don't need to play, like, the six or seven extra lands that you play in the Omnath shells. And, like, that's already ten cards, you know, or, like, eight or nine cards. Um, yeah, we're okay. We can just two mana ley line binding. Maybe my opponent will lightning bolt my bolt drifter and I can brought back two mold drifters. Maybe they'll have a second dress down and I'll lose my mind. Hmm. Like I only have one fetchable left in the deck, right? Might as well. Double check. Oh, no, the, the problem with this is if I draw a Maria. You're right, if I draw a Maria here, I'm kind of boned. Seems like they just have a counter spell. Sure. Best draw is Golos, I guess. It'd be a long match, chat. It'd be a long match. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, it's good for me they didn't encounter the Drifter. But, uh, I'm not sure why they didn't. I guess, I guess they, they, they could be worried about me, like, slamming something more impactful. Supreme Verdict is the Exiled card. Are we not on Temple Garden? I have no green cards in the deck, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing. I have, a, I have a just, I have one of these. But I have no green cards in the deck, so I don't know why we'd be on Temple Garden. They're not gonna verdict me, are they? They might, I don't know. I guess not. Bounce Omnath again. Kind of a weird board to bounce Omnath on. Okay, that's a great draw though. So you deal Riders, Ameria with Hardcast Solitude up. Just gonna. Oh, I know I, I shouldn't kill Triumph because letting them cycle Triumph is actually probably not that great for me. We're playing the long game though. We're playing. We're not in about this uh, two damage life. We're gonna get that to ferry off the field. Wow, another verdict. I was not expecting to get verdicted there. Not that it's that big a deal. I just have the Ameria going. You're kidding. Second Besage you. Absolutely getting 80 cards by the way. Unreal. 
what can you do? Draw Golos, maybe. That explains why they, they, you know, played this one, huh? They have a full grip and students on the car is not totally surprising. I mean, I think main decking two Besejus is surprising. That's that's kind of the, what I'm surprised about. And, um... Like, this is, like, the only out that they have to my Ameria plan, right? Yeah, maybe an Endurance. But, like, I'm, I'm surprised to see two in the main. Like, I don't, I don't even remember, like, old Yorion decks playing two in the main. So it's just weird to see now two in the main. <laughs> Alright, deal. It's okay, not a big deal. Two main, one side. I don't. I think it was usually one main, two side, but whatever. I imagine. I know that different people did different things. Golos best draw still would find me in Ameria. Okay. Let me just ephemerate this Wall of Omens now, I think. I just have Norn and play against the... <laughs> I guess their, their whole deck, right? Yeah, I'm not, not drawing a card anymore. Yeah, we'll see if they have three Verdicts. They could have three Verdicts. We have an issue closing out the game in time, too. We have 25 cards. Probably enough. Oh, Landfall also doesn't trigger off Omnath. That's pretty cool. Didn't realize that. So the hand is Omnath, three mystery cards. What in the world is this? <sighs> okay. So they can Ephemerate the Solitude, Exile my Wall and my Nor, and then Solitude, Solitude. Unironically, Elishnorn though, or Immacool is like not as bad for me as Elishnorn would be. <laughs> so we draw. Binding is only a pro yeah. So yeah, is this is this up to one? Yeah. So binding answers the Immacool at least, and like there's nothing they can do about it. How does Omnath work with Elish? I think the landfalls the landfall triggers just shouldn't trigger, right? The hand is their stand is still Omnath two mystery cards. They could have evoked. Oh, they could have evoked. Oh wow, that was huge. Oh, I saw four heartless summonings in the deck. That's actually really bad. Yeah, they, I guess they, they think that they can cast the binding effectively, but they have to choose the Emrakul. It's not a May ability, and it's only opponent's control. Huge punt. Clock is definitely going to be relevant. Yeah, they, they, they thought they, they, they thought they obviously they didn't realize this was only opponent's permanence. Okay, now I can solitude their Omnath. Let's just go ahead and go. Yeah, I think I need to not. Salt to this in response to the ETB because my opponent can like pretty easily have a Renin Six for Besaidu for Emrakul here and I just die. I'll salt to this end of turn if they don't you know have that, but well didn't play very well around second dress down I suppose. Best draw right now is probably a Miria. Norn's not bad. Norn's not bad. We're still pretty behind, but it will actually be hard for my opponent to, like, finish all three games uh, with only 12 minutes on the clock. So if we win game two, we've got a really good chance of them timing out. I'll, I'll still concede if I'm 0%, though, like I you know always do, but... It's going to be hard to feel like we're 0% anytime soon. They find Prismatic Ending, which answers my Norn. Very surprised by this attack. It's definitely not blocking. I 
Probably siding out. Uh... <laughs> I'll probably I'll probably keep it in one rider's post board. Cause they already have one triumph in the yard, so I'll get rid of this so they can't prismatic ending on five again. Alright, that is the uh They are playing three besages, they're main decking three besages. Brutal. I'll take like one more draw step though. Hey Yama, good to see ya. Yeah, they still have the delusion in the yard. They tutored windswept teeth? How many solitudes do I have left? I think I have one. How do they tutor windswept teeth here? I guess for the deluge. So we're looking for... Do I have enough mana to Golos? No, I don't, not enough mana to Golos plus spin. If I did, I would maybe not pay for Echo here. Ah, right on time, huh? Right on time. I guess I could have got got by the third to save you. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm gonna play one Avalanche Riders. Two Teferi. I can play one Dovin's Veto, second Avalanche Riders. I don't think we can actually hard cast this because of heartless summoning. I don't think we're gonna bring it in though. Yeah, I don't think Delvin's Veto hits enough. We'll just play two riders, I suppose. Obviously, good with Norn. You have a lot of synergy with the deck brought back Ephemerate, Norn, Miria. Yeah, my opponent, if the, my opponent should have enough time to should have enough time to uh, finish this game, but they probably won't have enough time for game three also. Why not play a cheap Eldrazi? Uh, shuffle to potentially cast, not like Hypergenesis as a factor. Uh, it's because of Tasha's Hideous Laughter, because it's just almost exclusively a sideboard card for Mill. Uh, I guess, like, like would I side in Kozilek in this matchup? Probably. Would Kozilek even be particularly good? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe. Only 12 sources. Um, you can hard cast because of Heartless Summoning, right? You also, you also, you know, Golos is relevant, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You have to have double heartless sounding. Surely Tasha's won't be in this deck post board. Uh, maybe. I, I like I, again. If you if you like feel like you really want to respect like the blue white and the four color matchup, then you can play. You can play one of those Eldrazi in the sideboard. The blue-white matchup has been really, really good so far. Um, I've, this is my first time playing against four color, and I will say that like, this version we're up against is like probably better against us than like a more typical four color list. Um, but it's it's really like not that deep overall. Like if if it's it's fine if you want to. It also seems fine if you don't want to. Um, there's a good chance I'm going to just brought back a fetch land next turn, so I can go turn three Moldrifter Ephemerate. If I draw a second fetch land, maybe I will. Yeah, maybe waiting to brought back on turn three is better, because then, then I can go turn four Moldrifter plus two Ephemerates. Doesn't sound half bad. I can also get a trial on the first first one here. Um, I guess I will brought back after my opponent fetches to play around counter spell. Or in response to the fetch, rather. So we'll go Rafine's Tower, Basic Planes. Modest, thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Good start, good start. Kind of bad against an opposing Teferi. Could just hardcast Bull Drifter, I guess. Yeah, we do have the Teferi. I'm playing my own Teferi here. Yeah, I think so. 
Let me draw a card. Maybe this is bad against Rin and Six. Ooh, that's a nice pickup, though. Are you going in the attic? No? Okay, sorry. I thought I heard you pull nothing. Should we just cast Small Drifter? We all know opponents pass 100%. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we're supposed to cast the Small Drifter here, but... You are right, a lot of, lot of opponents like to bounce it. They did have the Ren. It's okay. Get Fountain to... Uh, Heartless Summoning would be a really nice draw here. Elishnorn is also very nice. I think we just jammed the Norn since... There's not... They don't have very many things that can kill it. It's like just Supreme Verdict, right? And then I can maybe like kill their Teferi with the attack next turn. We'll see. Just down plus Binding? Yeah, sure. The Marin Solitude. Solitude doesn't kill Elastorn. Elastorn turns off Solitude and um, Binding. Prismatic ending, sure, sure, sure. Kind of forgot that they could do that. X equals five. Um, let's go, Los. I think I'm just going to put two more planes into play. So if my opponent verdicts me, I have this online. Getting the second Ameria might be better, but they, if they have Besage you, they can just Besage you both Amerias immediately, which is a problem. But I can also, I can spin Golos next turn if I want, if, assuming this lives. Long match. Grange to kill Teferi next turn, maybe. Why not if I'm right in order to save it? Uh, there's a Teferi Time Raveler in play. Yeah, Teferi does not stop Golos spin, thankfully. So Binding is actually kind of nice here since uh, if I ever Binding the Binding, we get our Golos back and the ability to just like spin immediately. Uh, I think I'm just supposed to evoke and try to try to marry this back next turn. Dressdown is so frustrating here. Dressdown is so frustrating here because it's just like, doesn't even go to the graveyard. Pass this. Uh, Pori, do you think it's Twitch Prime? <laughs> GG. Cannot beat opposing Elishnorn. Ugh, max pain match. Could keep if we had a second fetch here. I think we have to mulligan. Yeah, it's pretty good though. Go Esper Trium into Sacred Foundry. Ever since one came out, we haven't seen a lot of Breach. Any thoughts on why? Um, might be have to do with Mill's popularity. Mill might be really good against Breach. Or like, but also like I haven't been playing Breach because I've been, you know, brewing. But it's true I haven't been playing against it very much either. Oh, it's the challenge winning list, which which is probably a great matchup. Like, Shining Shoal is just not, <laughs> not it against us. Hammer should be playing an Evercold aside for Mill. Probably, yeah. Mill, Mill is like, at least, at least like, it, it could be dying down, but Mill has been like really, really popular, and like, Hammer is like very soft to Tasha's, so. Um, when, when you can turn like a really popular matchup from like unfavorable or scary into like just very good with one sideboard card, it's pretty worth it usually. We haven't played against it today, so it, it, Mill could be dying down. I'm still, I'm still in my play Emrakul in every sideboard uh, plan. And if I never play against Mill, then that's also, you know, a big W. Well, 
I can't quite go this this turn. Because I actually was not supposed to play the planes yet. Well, if I found, found Mold Drifter, I was rewarded. I'm sorry, sorry, it didn't win the challenge at top aided though. So so this deck is playing Shining Shoal and Chancellor of the Annex and then Miria to deal lots of damage, but it, it also seems like that, that interaction seems pretty bad against us. It's maybe supposed to Solitude here. It's probably okay not to. Like Hardcast Solitude seems nice. I could have drawn Norn and then double up on counters. Um all right, we'll just go Solitude, Exile, Esper Sentinel into Brockback. Maybe Hopeful Initiate is scary, but they still can't like training or anything. I like, I, I know that people play this card in Pioneer. I also know that people like this card. This card also looks like it just never, whenever I play against this in Modern, it looks like it just does nothing. I don't know if this is other people's experience playing with or against Hopeful Initiate, but I have like kind of yet to see this do anything. Is this really better than Hardcasting the Solitude? Uh, maybe not. Probably not, actually. Pretty bad against Second Adeline, too. Yeah, we should. I don't know why I, I even. <laughs> I did that. A lot of that today. Yeah, fancy play syndrome, exactly. Chronic illness. Okay, so this is. is they're each gonna get a counter now. And I guess they can spin three mana to kill Golos. It could be better than I think it is. I just, like, have yet to be really impressed by it. Like, here I don't have a, any good blocks. Um, I don't think I can chump because I need to play to draw Ephemerate or Brought Back. Remember, this is a 2 1, so I'm taking. Well, maybe I do have to chump. Chump like this. Alright. I don't think we're dead. Yeah, Modern's all over the place at the moment. I guess they're kind of good this game. Why not block the 1-1? One, one? Because this is a 2-1. One. It, it'll, it'll trade. I'm trying to draw uh, Ephemerate. Wow. Don't really have anything else. Typically against aggro decks you bring in Sanctifier, but not against their deck. Just run it back. With with the Teferi's run it back. Yeah, that was just a Pioneer deck. And did they cast any modern only cards? I don't think so. I think it was all just <laughs> mono white humans. I definitely messed up with the I don't know why I didn't hard cast the solitude. They run vile. Now let me see if I can find the um Oh Sentinel, right. Let's see if I can find the list. Yeah, Andrea played it today. So it's playing Shining Shoal, Exile White Card. Mana value X from your hand rather than pay spells mana cost. The next X damage a source of your choice would deal to you and our creatures this turn is dealt to any target. So by pitching Chancellor or a Marius Call, you get to redirect um, seven damage, which is very cute. NC, two months ago, thank you. Yeah, the yelling seems to have been super effective. <laughs> Disgusting versus Fury, yeah. Good against Fury, Heat, um, Hammer, Merktide. 
It's also like I think that a huge chunk of it too is is just the surprise factor. You know what I mean? You really you really just like get your opponents with this kind of stuff. Yeah, hard to play around too, even if it's a known quantity. But I I imagine like a big contribution to the deck top eighting is the surprise factor. But surprise factor for that. I, I would I would imagine it's still like very alive and well since I'd say most people are still unaware of the tech. But that that being said, you know you also just have you just have a beat down plan too. I can probably get basic planes here, and then maybe go like Jetmere's Garden plus Binding Wall of Omens next turn. Reed Duke one Philly. Pitch attraction, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, aspirin's so good. Yeah, ben Benton was also a big hero, huh? Ooh, I was just thinking about what if I draw Solitude, so... I guess we're pitching the Binding. Solitude Ephemerate. I think getting the wall down is really nice. I guess I could also binding this turn and the next turn hardcast solitude ephemerate. That's probably gonna be a bit better. So let's play to that. Can you even get a uh, plus one counter on the solitude? Maybe. I guess not if I'm ephemerating it. I guess it's probably better to solitude the champ especially because like i'd rather them if they're gonna get rid of my binding at any point it's better to have solituded the champ or binding the champ instead of and solitude the idol line I'll save the counter from the from the land. They weren't playing. They weren't playing protection spells, were they? Do I burn 24 months? Like, thank you. I need, let me double check the list. But I'm pretty sure they weren't playing like three of the elements. Yeah, I don't see any, so we should be pretty safe to. No brave the elements in this list. No ways. Oh, they, they do have solitude. Okay, so I guess I'll. Actually, just do this now to minimize the chance of solitude. Seems like they're F6 too, so I'm just gonna do this now. Relatively stable at the moment, um, with the ephemerate coming off rebound, but not a lot else after that. Huh. Well, can't cast this. Not a bad draw. This stops just Ephemerate Rebound and then Golos cast. So shouldn't really be a big priority. Yeah, I think I could just block like this. It's, you know, this is worse if I draw Ephemerate, but I could still Ephemerate my wall. And then at that point I get rid of the Magistrate, but I, I think just waiting is fine. A lot of good top decks. Okay, wow, played around Extraction Specialist pretty well, huh? <laughs> Pretty sure I'm just supposed to one mana mold drifter. Pretty good draws. Can't play this one, but you can go double binding this turn and then untap with another drifter. Would have been you know would have been better rewarded had we ooh. Definitely gonna binding that. 
So we're binding that and lieutenant. Let me see what we draw. Okay, with the Golos draw, I'll get rid of the Magistrate. And then block here, take six down to six. They have no cards in their hand. Fourth binding. Interesting. So yeah, we'll just go Norn with double double binding available, and then we can double up on the Golos triggers next turn as well. They can't hard they can't draw hard cast of solitude if they draw it. It's my umbrew, yeah. Almost exclusively play umbrews on the channel these days. There's some exceptions or sometimes I'll see a list I like and tweak it a little bit too, but like to give a shout out whenever that happens. So we'll just get two planes so we have a Maria online. Then we can act Spin Golos next turn, bring back Muldrifter, Solitude. Could be hard to lose. Opponent's also at one card and <laughs> Alright. Game three, game three. Where's the list? Uh, I, Andrea Maguchi's Twitter has it. He played it earlier today. I, I I don't know who the originator of the deck was, but you can find that out on the like Goldfish. Just see the username of the player top rated. Why did I swap the Triumphs? I just wanted Esper Triumph more than I wanted um, the whatever, whatever the other combo was I was playing. Ooh, it's so hard to mulligan Solitude Ephemerate, but probably on the Zero Lander. <laughs> Probably a mulligan, huh? Yeah, it might be a little slow. No one drop is a big game, though. Does everyone just copy deck list? No. I mean, I, I've done nothing but, like, brew and play brews on stream for, like, nearly four years now. <laughs> um... I you know, and I'm not the only person brewing either. There's a, a lot of a lot of people trying new things in modern, and you know, I think the people who go, oh, people just copy, oh, people only copy deck lists, or like, you know, <laughs> they only copy deck lists, and they kind of have the attitude that everybody else engages with the game in the same way they do. I would, you know, I I typically think. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with copying deck lists, but to pretend like, you know, people are copying the deck lists from somewhere. You know what I mean? People are copying the deck lists from somewhere. <laughs> it's pretty good. Teensy tiny bit flooded, huh? Gross. I mean, I have to cast this now because they're just going to name one. And I draw another ephemerate. Oh, unreal. Unreal. Like, no outs. <sighs> Should have kept the zero lander. Wall of Omens is maybe my best draw here, though. Okay, Wall of Omens into Solitude is not... Not half bad. It's it's like almost definitely not good enough though. Right? So block two threes take seven. Then I'll be able to go hardcast solitude, exile Adeline. Block prelate, presumably. Maybe I'm blocking a 1-1. One, one. Block, block, exile Adeline. Go to 5, block a 1-1. One, one. No, I'm going to have to... Why not fetch? I'm, I'm, ideally, Grange is the reason not to fetch. 
I think that kills me. So let's say I Solitude Brutal Cathar. Solitude Adeline pre-combat. Chump here. Trade here, take seven, not dead. Solitude prelate to get the FM. I don't think I have that luxury. I think I have to Solitude Adeline, Chump Block Thales Lieutenant, Block Synced and Prelate, and then I'm taking how much? I'm taking seven and I'm go to eight. And then I have like no outs. <laughs> so maybe if I go Solitude Brutal Cathar instead, then I can go Chump Lieutenant, Chump Adeline. Block a human token, take eight. So I have to block Sanctum Prelate instead. But at the very least I like have, at the very least I have like an extra creature this way and an extra card drawn. I guess also if I draw Solitude off of the Wall of Omens, I could pitch Solitude this turn, which would change some stuff. Yeah, if I was at like two more life, I could go Nor and Ephemerate Solitude next turn, but I'm just not at two more life. Oh, I forgot this gets a counter. I forgot this gets a counter. I think that me missing that means I have to chump block. Yeah, and then I have no, and I'm dead next turn. Okay. Tough, tough, tough. Okay, let's finish up though. Let's finish up the league. Okay, one the die roll. Seven lander. Keep this one. What are we putting back? Second brought back, maybe? Second brought back's pretty good in this hand. Put back. I mean, Amiria is also really good with double brought back. Let's put back the Riders. Really exciting hand, actually. Getting infected? Okay, no. Just stay. Uh, 60 card abundant growth deck this time. Let's we'll try to play around any counter magic with main phase brought back. Sprite Dragon's of Iconoclast. With four Underworld Breach, you have enough grindy elements to outgrind Murktide and Scam enough of the time that you want to be faster against like Mill and Titan. It's really not like that deep though. Ooh. Well, pretty punished for not getting Hallowed Fountain. Didn't play around it. It's okay. Ooh, Risen Reef. So we draw a uh yeah, blue source for Mole Drifter would be pretty nice, which we did find. So let me go... Evoke Mole Drifter. A bit worried about Solitude, but they've already, you know, they've already pitched one card. So there's five cards in their hand still. I'm gonna go for it, what can you say? Not the end of the world. Um, our... Ephemerate will fizzle, but we have Ephemerate plus Wall of Omen still, and then we're up against them having three cards in their, in their hand. And we have a Mary in play still. Weird game for sure. They have another Omnath? They pitch Prismatic and they do have another Omnath. Alright, draw a card. Binding. We got four cards. We have Ephemerate Rebound. It's very stops that pretty well, though.
Yo. Malibu, thank you for 11 months. Glad you like the stream. Do we have to sit and play another whole match against Four Color? We just spent like an entire hour. <laughs> I'll play, I'll play, I'll play. We just spent like an entire hour playing as this matchup. This is a good draw. Yeah, we're getting close to Dark Souls time. I, th I don't think we're quite there yet. But that's only because I drew Golos that we're not quite there yet. Maybe we're supposed to get Triumph here so any fetch land lets me spin Golos. I guess any fetch land still lets me spin Golos because we can get Sacred Foundry. I did know Boros Hellraiser was good against four color. I mean, I don't think our deck is particularly bad. We're playing Elish Norn. My opponent's draw has definitely been pretty good against mine, with like the having Solitude Endurance pretty well, double Reef, double Omnath, to ferry against the Ephemerate, but I just I don't know. After that first match, matches are so long, so grindy. I will say these, these matchups are like a lot more stomachable, like without Yorion in the deck. <laughs> without without Yorion in the deck, the matchups are a lot a lot more bearable. And we're even like we're even like not in bad position here, but I guess I should binding the Teferi and then Oh whoops, hold up hold up the ephemerate. So I can either ephemerate Golos to get a... I can attack the Rin also. To get another land or protect it from a, a removal spell. I was wondering why... Well, there's the Teferi in play. That's why I've been binding last turn. If I put attacks with the Reef, I could try to ephemerate the Golos now. I think I'll just chump block. We could guess binding on our turn. I didn't think it was like great too. I thought I felt okay about waiting. I don't know. No, I haven't played. I will play Boros Lotus Field probably at some point this week. I've only played one league. We five owed. I'm just kind of been itching to play more of this deck because this deck was so sweet. I'm just a content creator. Thankfully, they don't have a removal spell. Let's go ahead and just, I think, Sacred Foundry tapped, and then we can get back Solitude. Is, is I wonder, I guess the Omnath is probably a bit more important to get rid of, since it can dome me for four. All right, I'm just conceding. Favorite one brew? Yeah, this has been the most fun to play by a lot. Um, I don't think I would say it's the best. I mean, we can kind of go over the one brews. <sighs> like, Druid was really good. We didn't spend as much time with Druid as I wanted to. I thought that the, the Hellraiser control deck, I think, is showing a lot of promise. This deck has definitely felt very good. Does obviously compete with blue white control and um, and blue red murktide, but I, I I really liked this list a lot. This 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 was super promising as far as like working on the blue red control archetype. The re the Kadatha rebirth deck was interesting. We five out with it. Um, lots of like, lots of like. Okay, let's keep this one. Put back the planes. I think. Misha, 29 months, thank you. Yeah, the, Gor the Gorios deck was also, like, I think, good and promising. Nothing too crazy there, also, but... Right, let's, let's, let's try to high roll a, uh, a fetch land. If we if we miss on the fetch land, we can just, like, tap Triome and then play Teferi on turn three. Yes, for Gorios is really promising. I need to actually play... I need to play more Tybar decks, though. Tyver has been like I think Tyver has been the best card. Huh. All right, let me play basic planes so that if my opponent plays Risen Reef, I can go 
brought back Solitude and my Arid Mesa. Thoughts on Tyvar Fiend Artisan? Uh, I think Fiend Artisan is bad enough that like Tyvar probably doesn't make it playable still. I could be wrong, but that's my um, current impression. They didn't play into it, unfortunately. Maybe I need to just Rampant Growth. Oh, sorry, never mind. Obviously, we get to try and we can't Rampant Growth. I do think I needed to, though. That was a mistake. A lot of mistakes today. Playing kind of fast, but... It's kind of like... I don't talk about this enough, but like I always intentionally play really fast on stream so that the stream is a bit more engaging to watch. But that comes at the cost of like more misplays on average. I think it just has to be okay. I'm trying rights in the Goro's deck. What did you what did you cut for the rights? Is there a spot for evasive action in those five color decks? I don't know what that card does. Alright, let's let's go for the solitude. If they have memory, I'll just concede don't go to game game three. I I don't know. I don't I don't have <laughs> the, the the fact that we had to play um the four color matchup twice. Wreaking havoc on my already limited brain power too. Base of action isn't modern league, okay. Then we probably probably shouldn't be playing it. Uh, yeah, evasive action would be really nice uh, in, in in modern in general. You'd, you'd see you'd see like a decent amount of it, but it's just not not legal, unfortunately. The rebounds around solitude. I don't think in that exact spot it's correct. We're just we just get soloed so hard by Elishnorn. Like we do have like Teferi that can bounce it for a turn, and I don't know. Like we also have our own Nel Elishnorns in the matchup, but seems like an absolute nightmare overall. Okay, let's keep this. Fetching off the top would be really nice, but we I I will just ramp at growth with the brought back on turn two if we miss, I guess. Put on the mold of six. Alright, let's let's play Heartless Summoning. I oh well. No, we can't play Heartless Summoning here. We need to get another land into play. Because we can't go Godless Shrine into the, the white card, so I think I just have to brought back. And then next turn I can go Heartless Summoning uh, into Mole Drifter. And then we can play three mana Elishnorn, hopefully. I'm 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 I am dreading the the prospect of a Norn mirror, like two Norns of the same matchup, cyborg pending. Maybe, I don't know. Like the problem is like I don't know, maybe. Something something like that, yes. Something like that. Play this so we could draw Ephemerate, I think. We can, we can also hold the Elish, the, the Mold Drifter, but if my opponent like, removes the Heartless Summoning, it's just so bad to have held this. I think we should play it out here. Yeah, yeah with, with two Norns in play, no ETBs trigger. Is Laydown Arms good enough? Um, Laydown Arms is maybe a bit better. I I think neither are like particularly appealing to be honest. But uh, we actually might get we might get countered here. I think I'm gonna play Teferi. Then I could bounce the Binding and then Avalanche Riders the Ren. But I can also go. I can also go bounce binding next turn into Norn Avalanche Riders, destroy two lands. 
This could be our best answer to Elshore, honestly. Just, like, Riders them off of lands. Why not touch the Spirit Realm? Because uh, that card's, like, really weak, but you could play it. Like, I don't, like the, the problem is, like, you would only really want to sideboard it to answer Elish Norn, and I mean, it just feels a little narrow. Okay, I'm going to bounce this. Hmm. Well... Why don't we Avalanche Riders blow up their greens and these two lands to try to make it run a little bit trickier. And then I'll attack. Oh no. Oh, I was I was planning on putting two counters on this. I've made so many mistakes this league. This has been like one of the most mistake heavy league leagues I've ever played. Although this is still fine though. This is still fine because Elishnorn turns off the Omnath landfall. Um, this is this is still the right line, but I, I was thinking that I could trick them into blocking here, put two counters. But I forgot about the heartless summoning minus one minus one. But there's definitely been like a really bad ratio of misplays this uh, this league, unfortunately. I try not to beat myself up too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard deck to play. Hard, honestly, hard to focus on. <laughs> Anything. It's okay. Right, let's let's not pay echo. Okay, we won. We won, and thankfully we're out of the the four color bracket. So one of my favorite decks to be playing. Elish Norns feels like a big problem. Trying to riders them off Norns seems fine. Yeah, but maybe lay down arms in the sideboard would be nice. And like having having cheap removal in general in the sideboard could be good. Something to chew on. It might just be like you just might play them over the sanctifiers. Okay, okay. Uh let's play some Dark Souls. Yeah, I think I think that would be in for lay down arms over sanctifier going forward. Ha <laughs> ha